Oh, boy. <laughs> whoever, whoever could have seen this coming? <laughs> For those of you that don't know why exactly I would be laughing or why I kind of have this snarky attitude towards Cody Rhodes, let's take a trip in time back to 2018. Now, up to that point in time, you go back historically and you could watch, if you were around long enough to watch the old Off the Rope Show channel, this channel, usually it said some pretty good things about Cody Rhodes over the years. And I remember, what was it, Survivor Series 2011, wasn't it, where Sin Cara <laughs> tore his patel attended in the middle of the match? And it was Cody Rhodes that you could tell kind of looked at Randy Orton and like pulled shit together, where they didn't really know what to do because one of the key participants... It was gone from the match. And now what the hell do you do? You got to improvise and make it work. So you certainly can't say that I've historically been a Cody Rhodes hater like certain other founder pieces of crap or twizzy wearing fuck boys. You know, certainly not of that category. But in February 2018, uh, Twitter user Raiden Xerox, Julius Wright, sent me something, it was February 8th, 5th, excuse me, 2018, I've got it pulled up here on the different laptop, the Schlegel 6000, and it was him screenshotting something where Cody Rose was asked a question about a, in a Q&A or something, the per, Twitter user at the time was rtib 8 asked, do you think Vince unfairly holds back talent that comes up from NXT? Cody Rhodes replies, he doesn't hold anybody back. A lot of times it's hard for fans to accept that some of their favorites have a ways to go or that they become lazy after they get that first LE check. Stardust, for example, didn't go beyond tag gold because I wasn't improving and I also got out of shape. Now on the surface, there's nothing incredibly bad or wrong with that response. Since... Mr. Wright had asked me my thoughts on it. I'm going to respond in kind. And I said, and I quote, I think it's a great example of at Cody Rhodes taking accountability for himself and his career trajectory, which I commend him for. That said, it's a political answer and not exactly grounded in reality. To say Vince doesn't hold people back is just flat out false, unquote. Nothing that I said was wrong in any way, shape, or form. And you'll even notice the first part of that tweet was pretty complimentary to Cody. It was not a backhanded compliment. It was like a legitimate compliment. I said he was taking accountability for his career trajectory and I commend him for that. Legit compliment. And what happened was that for the next week or two, like it became a whole fucking thing, Cody Rhodes responded like a little pussy ass bitch. He didn't have to, he chose to. And I don't give a fuck how big your platform is or how many dopey ass, dumb ass followers you have. It doesn't change the fact that you overreacted like a fuckstick. That's exactly what Cody Rhodes did. It was true four years ago. It's even more true now. Like, it was ridiculous. Of course it was a political fucking answer. And anybody that couldn't see that was deluding themselves. It also started exposing just how much of a liar Cody Rhodes was. It was something he has demonstrated at other times over the past couple of years. But of course, for those that are AEW bots, they totally tolerate it and excuse it and justify it. Well, what say you now, bitches? <laughs> Hashtag Schleg Daddy was right. Of course that answer four plus years ago was a political answer because Cody Rhodes was always going to try and leave that door open to go back to WWE. There are many things I can say about Cody Rhodes, many things I can call Cody Rhodes. The one thing I'm not gonna call him here is a fucking idiot when it comes to business because somehow, some way, 
This guy convinced Tony Khan in AEW that he was a big damn deal and worth seven figures and was going to be a needle mover, deserved an EVP title in that company, and now, apparently, if you believe the most recent reports and the fact that it's involving Cody, a former AEW guy, and it got out there, there's got to be some credence to it because God knows if there was something in the works for him to go back to AEW, you would hear nothing but fucking radio silence for all the dirt sheets who, by the way, still four plus years later, can kiss my fucking ass for sitting there knowing I was fucking right. Knowing that you had numerous other examples of wrestlers at a similar level of Cody or even higher than Cody talking about how Vince McMahon and the WWE absolutely holds people back up to and including Cody Rhodes himself having a history of talking about that and saying that shit. And yet they said, oh, Cody Rhodes owns fan. He didn't own shit and you fucking good and well know it. You cannot like me. You can dislike my very punchable face and all of that shit and not dismiss the merits of what the fuck I said. But, as we know, because most of these wrestling writers and dirt sheet folks lack spine, lack testicular fortitude, and want to make sure they protect whatever fucking access they have, of course they're going to take the side of a chode like Cody Rhodes. Of course they're going to. But you can imagine, again, my complete lack of total surprise at the news that he signed, or reportedly signed, with WWE, because of course he fucking did. AEW was leveraged for him. This dude somehow conned, you know, Time Warner into giving him TV shows. He's, he had a show on TBS, he fucking doing this, and he's doing that, he's got the reality show. He is nowhere near the level of talent, name, or drawing power to justify all that treatment. But he leveraged himself into that position. Like I said, many things I can say about Cody Rhodes, fucking idiot, isn't one of them. From a business standpoint, he has great business sense, especially when it comes to the business of Cody Rhodes. Some incredibly founder-like traits there. And I guess I have to give him credit because... He always resisted turning heel in AEW. Well, what better way for him to turn heel than to go back to the Titan Tower machine in Stamford, Connecticut, huh? Like, could you imagine being surprised that Cody Rhodes went back to WWE? You don't think this was in his character? Like, you thought he was an AEW guy for life? You thought he truly was bought into that program and that vision and that company? Wake up, people. Cody Rhodes is about Cody Rhodes first and foremost. He don't give a fuck about anything or anybody else. And if you say, well, look at your school and all the people he helped, that's still about him. You can absolutely help other people and have entirely selfish motivations to do so. If you think he's doing that entirely out of the goodness of his own heart, heart you're delusional. You're just disconnected from reality. And what I don't get, frankly, from a WWE standpoint is, sure, it probably feels great to them to bring Cody back into the fold and say, <laughs> we brought one of the EVPs here back to WWE. I'm sure that's primarily, exclusively, the only motivating factor for why this signing would even happen. Because for a company that's so often talking about cutting expenses and it's a budget thing, pal, why in the hell would you bring in a guy that inevitably you're going to have to give an incredibly overinflated salary that is going to provide you so little in return? I will never sit here and say that Cody Rhodes isn't a solid performer. But that's the key thing. Solid. He's solid on the mic, but not spectacular. He's solid from like a presentation standpoint, but not spectacular. Solid in the ring, not spectacular. I don't even know that his character is solid, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt to keep the theme going of solid, not spectacular. In today's wrestling business, is not worth millions of dollars a year. Now, as far as Cody's motivations for going back to WWE, I would have to ask, you know, why the fuck would you want to go back working there? There's a reason you left, and that shit hasn't gotten any better. It's only gotten worse. 
Now, maybe you think you'll be better positioned this time because you've shown you can go somewhere else and be successful. Maybe Vince Deep Down will respect that and he'll treat you better. But how long is that going to last? Meanwhile, working for WWE, the road schedule's harder, travel's shittier. Like, there's just so many other bad things about it. It hasn't gotten any better. So it can't be about a better work environment. I'm sure there were issues with Cody and the other EVPs. We've seen that reported about, and especially if Omega and the Bucks wanted to get that shit out there about Cody, they would because Meltzer will, does their marching orders. So does Tony Khan. It can't be better working for Vince. There is no way. There is no damn way. But four plus years ago, when Cody Rhodes is sitting there saying, it's not a political answer. <laughs> yes, it fucker was, D-bag. I mean, if you were, again, if you were surprised that Cody Rhodes has reportedly signed with WWE, what planet have you been living on the past few years? What on the flat earth are you fucking thinking? It's perhaps a really good reminder to not invest too much into any of these people and give them too much of the benefit of the doubt, especially when they don't deserve it. And somebody like Cody Rhodes has absolutely done nothing to deserve that benefit of the doubt from you. He is full of shit. He has always been full of shit. He will continue to be full of shit. He only knows how to lie. That's what he does. But that's the nature of the business that he's in. You can't blame him for that. I blame people for thinking that he was actually an AEW lifer. So this holds out to be true and he actually signs with, has signed with WWE like, and that's what he wants to do, good for him. Sure, WWE will probably give him a very intense push at Mania in the months that follow, but what's it going to look like six months, a year, or two years from now? Like, is he hoping he's going to be an AJ Styles type of guy? Like, maybe that's the role that he could fit. But even then, AJ Styles is back down in the mid-card and tag team, that type of shit. He's a guy, but he's certainly not a prominently featured guy to the level he was a couple years ago. A part of the show, but not the show, if you get my drift. Do I feel any redemption about this? Ah, not really. I just think it's funny. A lot of people probably mad and butthurt, especially the AEW folks. They'll sit there and pretend like they're not because they will pretend that they didn't like Cody anyways because now that Cody doesn't fit what they want, now they're just ready to discard him. <laughs> but they know the truth. They know this bothers them and they know it. They fucking know it. They feel betrayed. They feel lied to. Ha! Huh. Cody Rhodes lied to you. Huh. Gee, imagine that. Where in the fuck have you been the past four plus years? As far as I'm concerned, though, the one thing I will give Cody Rhodes above all else is rare is the mid-carder that could generate so much buzz and interest around such a middling performer. I mean, Cody is mid in a lot of ways. He's a solid hand. You'd want him as a part of your company. But he's certainly not top level. He just isn't. And after this many years, he's proven that he isn't that type of dude. He just isn't. If you don't see that by now, I don't know what the hell you're ever going to see it. So yeah, best of luck to him. Sure, sure, soon enough, he'll get a reminder why the hell he left in the first place. Good luck with that.